President Trump yesterday announced emergency FDA approval for an effective plasma therapy for the Chinese flu, or the Wu flu, or the Kung flu, or the flu Manchu, or COVID-19, which stands for China, O Vicious in Despotism, times 19, or something like that. The New York Times, a former newspaper, denounced Trump's actions, saying that if the therapy shouldn't fact turn out to be effective, it presents a serious threat to the First Amendment by hampering the press in its duty to spread unreasoning terror in the hopes of getting Joe Biden elected. In an editorial personally written by Times editor-in-chief Blithering Prevarication III on his personal velvet sheathed laptop with the sparkly keys meant to represent the glittering quality of his integrity in attacking injustice whenever and wherever it threatens the election of a Democrat, and in attacking justice under the same circumstances, Mr. Third wrote, quote, The idea that any action taken by Donald Trump could reduce the death and suffering from this pandemic is an unprecedented danger to this republic because it could turn voters toward Donald Trump, who is an unprecedented danger to this republic and thus cause his reelection, which would be an unprecedented danger to this republic. Trump has already begun to bring peace to the Middle East, which is not only a stab in the back to the cause of innocent and oppressed terrorists everywhere, but also harms the reputations of foreign policy experts merely because they happen to have been wrong about everything. Now he threatens to reduce deaths from COVID-19, which could undermine the very foundations of the great and good American narrative we were planning to peddle straight through November, unquote. Presumptive former Democrat President Joe Biden said in his convention speech last week that he would create testing, staffing, and manufacturing buildups that Trump has already created. He now says he's working on getting emergency FDA approval for an effective plasma therapy, a move the Times hailed as brilliant. Trigger warning, I'm Andrew Claven, and this is The Andrew Claven Show. I feel hunky-dunky, life is tickety-boo. Birds are winging, also singing, hunky dunky doo Ship shaped ipsy topsy, the world is a bitty zing. It's a wonderful day, hurrah, hooray! It makes me want to sing. Oh, hurrah, hooray! Oh, hooray, hurrah! All right, we're back speaking to an entirely new audience because no one could have survived this Clavenless weekend. But if you are here, that is all the more reason why you should go on the Andrew Claven YouTube channel and subscribe. It's very helpful to us if you subscribe. And if you leave a comment that's even semi-intelligent, we figure it'll raise the level of the conversation on this show. Uh, and so we'll read it out loud. Uh, for instance, we have one uh, from Joe S. <laughs> who <who's laughs> says, Bernie Sanders walks into a bar and yell drinks on me. <laughs> Who's paying? <laughs> that's pretty good. Um, watching BLM Marxists and right wingers clashing in Portland has been violence all over the country. But there was a clash between some right wingers and Marxists in Portland. Uh, I was reminded of a disturbing trend I've already noticed on TV shows that take place during the last century. The two shows that come immediately to mind are the excellent German detective show uh, Babylon Berlin, which is about the Weimar Republic, and the fine gangster show Peaky Blinders that takes place in England around the same time. In both shows, we see the chilling rise of Hitler's Nazis, and also in both shows, we get a sympathetic view of the opposing communists, as if this were a battle between good and evil. But it wasn't. It was a battle between two opposing forms of oppression. It's true, there were probably more people of goodwill on the socialist side than on the Nazi side. Since Hitler was an openly hateful and maniacal piece of garbage, it would have been hard to follow him with goodwill. But the very best that can be said about the socialists is that they were incredibly naive and misguided, and that didn't stop them from being violent and from engaging in vandalism. Like the French Revolution, the Soviet Socialist Revolution inspired Europe with the hope of a better tomorrow. And like the French Revolution, the Soviet Revolution devolved into a crap show of mass murder and oppression almost immediately. And, as with the failure of the French Revolution, intellectuals and other idiots refused to acknowledge the failure of the Soviet Revolution and continued to spread its toxic philosophies while demonizing anyone who pointed to its catastrophic results. At some point, well-intentioned or not, this becomes blamable. Thought leaders, like the writers of Babylon Berlin and Peaky Blinders, have a responsibility to pay attention to socialism's inherent oppressiveness, which always leads to political slavery, poverty, inequality, and oftentimes mass murder. It's freedom, 
personal freedom that brings happiness to individuals and prosperity to nations. Not just your freedom, but the freedom of the guy next to you who you can't stand. And not just the freedom to do whatever you want, but the freedom to discern the good and do that. We know this is true. History has already proven it. Just in the last century, whether we're left or right, it's our responsibility to pass the information on. All right, and let me pass this on because you really want to go to Rock Auto, not just because you'll get great parts for your car, not just because it has low prices and an incredible selection that you can get right off your computer, but because it gives you the chance to say rockauto.com. And girls love that. They just fall right over rockauto.com. Don't say it if you're a girl because then the girls will, never mind. But the, the thing is, rockauto.com doesn't, isn't just fun to say. They always offer the lowest prices possible rather than changing prices based on what the market will bear. And you don't have to get in your car, which isn't running because it needs a part, and pretend to drive down to the auto uh, parts store where they probably won't have what you want. You can do it right there on your computer. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, and the name rockauto.com. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right, Clavin, and you got to say it the same way, Clavin in there. How did you hear about us box? So they know we sent you and write Clavin in the box that says, how do you spell Clavin? If they don't have a box that says, how do you spell Clavin? They should. Uh, there was, it's K-L-A-V-A-N, just so you know. Uh, um, there was a another a police shooting of a black guy in a in the Democrat-run city of Kenosha, Wisconsin. Violence erupts. Uh, a car uh, dealership was set on fire. Let me just read you uh, some of the headlines. Um, here's from Washington Post. Video shows Wisconsin police shooting a black man multiple times as he enters a car. CNN. Wisconsin police shoot black men as children watch from a car, attorney says. ABC, Kenosha, Wisconsin shooting, police shoot black man from behind. Protests erupt with garbage trucks set on fire. Here's Joe Biden. You probably have heard of Joe Biden. Here's his statement. He says, the nation wakes up yet again with grief and outrage that yet another black American is a victim of excessive force. This calls for an immediate, full, and transparent investigation, and the officers must be held accountable. These shots pierce the soul of our nation. From the governor of uh, Wisconsin, a Democrat, uh, saying, what we know for certain and that he is not the first black man or person to have been shot or injured or mercilessly killed at the hands of individuals of law enforcement in our state and in our country. He promised there would be accountability let me just play the video for you. Here's the video. It's, it's upsetting. It's a shooting. So I'm not going to rush to judgment, but the guy is, they, he's under arrest. The police were responding to this domestic disputes. They're placing him under arrest. They've got their guns pointing at him. He continues to walk away, and then he reaches into a car. We don't know if there was a gun in the car. The police certainly don't know if there's a gun in the car. There have been incidents of guys pulling guns out of cars and shooting police. I, forget about judging the shooting. You know, I know we all like to have a judgment right away, but forget about that for a minute. But can't we at least say that Joe Biden and Governor Ev Evans and Governor uh, Evers and ABC and CNN and the Washington Post, can't we at least say that they are disgusting? This is a disgusting rush to judgment. It's a disgusting abandonment of law enforcement who are out there risking their lives. It's a disgusting disregard for law-abiding citizens who are not running away from the police, who stop when the police ask them to stop. It is when the police do that. I know it's annoying. Listen, we've all been stopped by the police if just for speeding. I've been stopped for speeding. Nobody likes it, but that's the way the law is enforced. We have to let them enforce the law. It's it's just appalling to it, when the cities are already burning to put out this incendiary information. And again, this is regardless of whether the cops were right or wrong. I mean, if the cops are wrong, the thing that leaders should be doing is saying, hey, stay calm. Let's get the facts. Justice will be done. That's what a leader says. That's not like, oh, my God, you know, burn, set the city on fire. Everything's terrible. This is absolutely disgusting. And really, and really, the, it's the left, the Democrats, they should be held to account just for what they said about this before there was any proof. You know, there's a, uh, during the protests, there's one video of rioters showing up with automatic weapons 
meeting a sheriff with automatic weapons. Where are the Democrats? Where is Joe Biden? This is incredible stuff. And it's all based on this idea, on this overwhelming idea that we heard again and again at the DNC convention uh, last week, that America is inherently racist. This woman, Jamelli Hill, uh, she was a sportscaster, as I recall, wasn't she on ESPN? Now she's worked for the Atlantic. Um, she, she had this tweet that went out. And I, I mentioned this is not just a pick on Jamelli Hill or anything. It's, it's because this is all part, Jamel Hill, sorry, this is all part of the narrative that they've been selling all this time. And now Joe Biden is selling. I mean, there's just no way of getting around the fact that Joe Biden is selling this narrative. And uh, obviously, the governor of Wisconsin is selling. ABC is selling it. CNN, Washington Post. We know the New York Times is selling it. They, perp- they pos- uh, practically made it up. Jamel Hill, she says, I've been reading Il- Isabel Wilkerson's new book, Cast. Now, this is a book about uh, caste that compares Indian, the Indian caste system to America. And it's been touted by Oprah Winfrey, who is in the highest caste of American society, lifted by love. She was, uh, Oprah Winfrey was lifted by love, just like Barack Obama, lifted by love to that position. If there's so much hatred against black people that she would not be where she is. But Jamel Hill says, I've been reading this book, and if you were of the opinion that the United States wasn't nearly as bad as Nazi Germany, <laughs> how wrong you are. Can't encourage you enough to read this masterpiece. What a dimwit. I mean, what a dimwit, really. You know, the the Democrat uh, um, laws against black people, the segregation laws passed by Democrats in the South um, were absolutely they were absolutely bad. You know, they were bad. And some of the early laws that Hitler passed against Jews, the Nuremberg laws, had the same kind of, uh, you know, aspect of as as Jim Crow. Now, there was a million differences. One is the Jim the Jim Crow laws were passed to preserve the bigotry that was already there in the Democrat South. The Democrats lost the Civil War. They lost their slaves. They tried to reinstitute slavery through Democrat uh, institutions like the Ku Klux Klan and Jim Crow. So they were trying to hold on to something that was already there. The Nuremberg laws were passed against people who were full citizens of the society. I'm not excusing Jim Crow at all. I'm just saying it's nonsense. But the the Nuremberg laws were just the first step of the absolute destruction of a people. You know, it's 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 intolerable that she is taking what was in a certain part of America, the, the part of America where the Dixiecrats, the Democrats of Dixie, were operating and uh, keeping Jim Crow in place, and she is comparing that to what happened in Nazi Germany. But it's it's everything they do. I mean, you know, they have this stupid post office thing where they came back like it's an emergency. They couldn't come back to send checks to people who were out of work because of the China flu. They, not because of the China flu, because of the shutdown, because of the government shutdown. Democrats couldn't be bothered to do that. They actually said, Nancy Pelosi actually said, that's not very strategic of us right now. They want us to suffer because they're saying to us, vote for Joe Biden or you will suffer more. (laughs) They now have, but they do rush to have this thing where they're going to send, this is obviously one of those House bills that will never make it through the Senate, but they want to send $25 billion to rescue the post office so we don't something, 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 fascism, conspiracy. The post office has plenty of money. They've got like $12 billion. They couldn't spend $25 billion in any effective way between now and the election. So it's a complete show. It's complete theater, complete kabuki theater. But listen to Rashid Tlaib. Okay, listen to her talk about this. This is cut 16. Do you hear that? That's our democracy crumbling. Let it be clear. This administration is waging an authoritarian campaign to sabotage this election by manipulating the Postal Service to suppress our votes. And they are threatening the livelihood of our postal workers, our seniors, our veterans, and so many more in the process. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is fascism. We will not stand for this now or ever. It is a conspiracy theory. It's not fascism. And it's, you know, even if she thought it threatened fascism, this kind of overblown rhetoric at this moment in history is just absurd. It's the rhetoric that's worse than anything that's happening, even anything that's happening on the left. And it's giving license to people to burn down these cities. And the press thinks they're going to get away with not showing it. They think they're going to uh, keep it off the Internet. I don't know. They, what do they think they're going to do? Maybe they'll just set out like a, one of those flashbang grenades and we'll all go blind. And we want, oh, I thought I was watching riots everywhere, but now I can't see. I guess I'll vote for Joe Biden. You know, maybe that's that's the strategy. Here is an interview. Uh, I think it's um, 
Robin Roberts, an exclusive ABC interview with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And she asked them about this. Let's play the one with Biden first. Cut 20. My administration across the board is going to look like America. Number one. Number two, we're going to make sure that we change the entire system with the way in which we deal with with criminal justice from one of punishment to rehabilitation. No one should be going to jail because they have a drug addiction. They should be going into mandatory drug treatment. What's amazing about this is just like socialism, it's been done before. The reason the country sank into high crime and their cities became unlivable in the 1970s is because we followed this. If you want the history of it, it's in Ann Coulter's book, Mugged, which is excellent. Uh, Ann Coulter, it's one of her uh, best books. Uh, Ann Coulter's Mug traces the way the leniency and the pro-criminal uh, policies of the left set this country on fire and made its cities unlivable. And it's because the people you're supposed to be governing are the normals, the people who follow the rules, the people who pay the taxes, the people who pay for these buildings and, and streets that you're littering with homeless people and with violence. They're the people you're governing for. Yes. Do you want to have compassion on people who are in, in poverty? Of course. Of course. It has nothing to do with compassion. But where's your compassion for everybody else? Where's your compassion for the majority? Why is the entire it's like in the Upper West Side in New York now they've, they've just absolutely uh invaded the place with homeless people. They've just thrown them out there. And when the residents complain and say our children are in danger, our lives are in danger, our neighborhoods have gone down the drain. We paid for these places. We put all our investment in these places. The, the rulers of New York, the New York regime says some shame on you for not caring about the homeless. You know, good policy keeps homeless people off the street. And it's not the policy of ruining neighborhoods that where people have invested. You know, these these people, these governors are living off that investment. They, there's no tax base if people leave. There's no tax base if the, if the normal people leave. Andrew Cuomo at least knew that when he started begging them to come back. But why should they come back? Why should they come back if this is the way they are? And Kamala Harris, this here's let's play the part of Kamala Harris uh, with uh, Robin Roberts on ABC's Cut 21. You conclude by saying that you wanted to see more police on the street. Do you still feel that way? Listen, I think that there is no question. First of all, when I wrote that book, um, we, Black Lives Matter did not exist. And I give full credit to the brilliance of that movement in terms of what it has done to advance a conversation that needed to happen a long time ago. What Black Lives Matter has done as a movement has been to be a counterforce against a very entrenched status quo around the criminal justice system in America. And that's why I'm so excited about what we can do in terms of a new administration in the White House that is about taking on these issues in a way that makes clear that the American people are ready for it and they want it. And nobody says to her, no press reporter says to her, well, what about the violence in the streets? What about the violence against police? What about the crime that's killing black people so much more than any police violence is? You know, the, the 90 percent of uh, black people who die of violence are killed by other black people by murder. They're murdered. And most black people do not want the police defunded. Of course they don't. The police are in there to protect them. Let's hear Trump on this. His response this is something he said before the Kenosha shooting. This is on Friday, uh, cut one. They're also not talking about law enforcement and our great police. They're not talking about that. They don't want to talk about it. They see Portland and you see New York with a 358 percent increase in crime, some number that's just crazy. And you see what's going on in Chicago. But look at Portland. They're anarchists. They don't want to talk about police because it's a losing subject for them. They want to defund the police and they want to they want to abolish police. I mean, they're actually trying to do it in Seattle. The Democrat run cities are a disaster. You know, they really are. But I think Trump needs to take more action. I don't think you can have sheriffs uh, confronted by uh, automatic weapons without going in there, without sending the federal uh, troops, the National Guard in there. I, you know, I know that Trump doesn't want the trouble with the press because the press makes it seem like he's starting the violence. But you can't have cities being burned for months and months on end. There are people in those cities who pay taxes, who follow the rules, and they need to be protected. And I think Trump should maybe step up his game a little bit in bringing law and order back to these cities. 
All right, let us uh, pause for just a moment and talk about your ancestry. This is, this is one of those things that is incredibly fun. It is incredibly fun to find your family story. This is Ancestry.com. You know you you know the, the drill. You, you basically spit in a cup and they send you your DNA. Uh, and you, they tell you where your family is from. They can help you trace your family trees. You could find a famous relative. You might find a photo of your great-grandmother as a little girl. Whatever you find, it's sure to change the whole way you look at your family history and yourself. After all, the story of your family is the story of you. Ancestry DNA doesn't just tell you which countries you're from, but also can pinpoint the specific regions within them, giving you insightful geographic detail about your history. You can trace the paths of your recent ancestors and learn how and why your family moved from place to place around the world. I'm laughing because I know mine moved because people were chasing them. No other DNA test delivers such a unique interactive experience. Start exploring your family story today. Head to my URL at Ancestry.com slash Clavin to get your Ancestry DNA kit and start your free trial. That's Ancestry.com slash Clavin. You might even learn how to spell Clavin because it's very important to remember there are no E's in Clavin. It's K-L-A-V-A-N. Just make it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I just make it look this easy. So. Tonight, the RNC gets its chance to fight back, to have its convention and to make its case. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see the coverage after we saw uh, that covered that absurd. I mean, how anybody can go home as a journalist after watching the a speech and saying, oh, it was so wonderful. You know, the Mar- Margaret Brennan on CBS, uh, you know, I used to like her. She used to be kind of fair, but she's just gone whole hog. I guess she got the word from on high. We're supporting the Democrats. I, you know, she was like, when she heard Obama, she was clasping her hands under her chest like like Tess Trueheart after Dick Tracy had saved her. Oh, thank you. Dick. You know, it just, it's just it's just insane. So let's see how they cover the RNC. It should be uh, pretty funny. They released their agenda. Uh, they Obviously, they want to push jobs. Job creation, create 10 million new jobs in 10 months, uh, cut taxes to boost take home pay, developing vaccine. Uh, by the end of 2020, Tim Scott is out there. He'll be one of the speakers. Uh, obviously, they've got to get a black guy in there and he's a good one. He's a good man. And uh, here's his, his pitch. Uh, cut 11. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on growth. The Trump administration pre-COVID-19 created 7 million jobs and they did it in an inclusive way the lowest unemployment rate on record for African-Americans, Hispanics, Asians, 70-year low for women. If President Trump is reelected, and he will be, we can expect more growth. Hope. You know, I think this this is a good deal. One of the things that we saw, uh, I don't think that Biden got a bump on the DNC, and that rarely happens. It happened with John Kerry, I remember. Um, You know, it's not a good sign. Right now, you know, Trump is still trailing, but the signs are pretty good. Republicans are just now getting interested in the election. I always tell I always tell commentators this because, you know, pundits always think we're, that everybody is like us, that we're there. Everybody's paying close attention. A lot of people have not been paying attention. The Democrats, of course, have been wholly engaged because they hate Trump so much. But the Republicans haven't. Now the Republicans are paying attention. Uh, he's held on to his base. Nobody nobody knows whether he has increased, um, you know, support in uh, minority voters. I mean, it's, it's very hard to get that information because people are afraid to say stuff. But but who knows? I mean, right now, I, I'd say he's just about as far behind as he was with Hillary Clinton. Uh, the uh, battleground states are narrowing. We will see. The left is doing everything they can to make chaos out of it. Uh, but, but you know, they're trying to get, get a more hopeful uh, message. This is Trump again uh, last week, uh, cut 10. Joe Biden grimly declared a season of American darkness. And yet, look at what we've accomplished until the plague came in. Where Joe Biden sees American darkness, I see American greatness. We've seen heroic doctors and nurses racing into action to save lives. We've seen first responders helping strangers in need. We've seen the passage of historic legislation to save 50 million American jobs. We've mobilized American industry like never before. You know, I mean, it's this statement of what he wants to do down at the bottom. You know, he emphasizes the stuff about health care and uh, changing our reliance on China. But so down toward the, the end, there's some really good stuff. If he means it, uh, education provides school choice to every child in America. I think that is a great agenda. Teach American exceptionalism. I think that is the right thing to do. Actually, what I would want to see taught is the freedom agenda. I would like to see freedom emphasized as as the 
prime value, uh, the history of freedom, how it comes to us from Greece and Rome and uh, through Europe and to America. You know, I think that freedom is the thing that makes this country so so different or has up till now. And I think it's important that children learn that, you know, that it comes with problems. It hasn't always, you know, if, if slavery was wrong, here's my thing, you know, they like to emphasize slavery. Oh, the great sin of slavery and, and a great sin indeed, but a great sin being committed by everybody else, including everybody in Africa. So a pretty universal sin. But if slavery is so bad, why is it so bad? Well, it's so bad because freedom is good, right? If freedom is not good, slavery is not bad. But slavery is bad because freedom is good. So I would like to see freedom, the freedom agenda taught in school. Uh, You know, he has a thing, uh, drain the swamp, pass congressional term limits. Excellent idea. That would be absolutely terrific. Some people say that congressional term limits are bad because they give more power to the um, to the permanent government, to the bureaucracy. But I would like to see the laws about the bureaucracy changed as well. Uh, and that's another one. He says, end bureaucratic government bullying of U.S. citizens and small businesses. That, I think, should be done by law. I think that they should get rid of, uh, they should pass laws to counteract Supreme Court decisions that give too much power to bureaucracies, allowing bureaucracies to interpret their own regulations, which essentially makes them not just legislators, it also makes them the judge uh, in the trial, which is not a separation of power as bad. They want to uh, defend the police rather than defund the police, end illegal immigration and protect American workers uh, and innovate. Uh, they want to have a first man mission to Mars, which I, I love. I just I think that's a great idea. Um, and Amer- America first foreign policy. You know, it's, it's interesting. They're touting, of course, the Democrats are touting. Fair enough. Uh, Republicans like Jeff Flake, who have defected to Biden's side. And I, I can't imagine. I'll talk about this in a minute. I can't imagine how anybody, seriously, anybody can support Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. I mean, really, I hate Trump. Stay home. I get it. But really voting for, you know, I mean, the only the only way I could see doing it, I guess, is is just saying, like, you think Trump is so bad that you'll even vote for these commun- this the, the brain dead guy and the communist uh, and the corrupt communist. But it, it's a, it's pretty bad. It's lowering yourself a lot. But the people, the Republicans who think and I, there are a lot of them and whether they're principled or not is not the point. The Republicans who think once we get rid of Trump, uh, we can get back to normal. They are wrong. They are wrong. They people sent Trump to the presidency for a reason. He beat every other Republican like that. I mean, the, the defeat, his defeat, Trump's defeat of Hillary Clinton may have been a one-off. He may lose. See, this is the thing I keep telling people, and they just, they don't even hear the words coming out of my mouth because everybody's saying, well, it was a, it was a mistake. It was, you know, a fluke that he beat Hillary Clinton. Maybe so. He may lose this next election. But the fact that he beat 17 other Republicans and the best that the Republicans had to send, I've told this story before, but just before the primary started, I met a guy who was going to work at a very high level uh, in the Jeb Bush campaign. And I blurted out in my completely Clavenesque way, which I, I wish I sometimes wish I wouldn't do, but I can't help it. I blurt things out that I just speak. I say the thing that I think is true. I said to him, Jeb Bush, no one's going to vote for him. And he snorted at me, like, you know, like, what do you, what do you know? And later I, they had me on a podcast where they said, how did you know? And I said, everybody knew, everybody knew except that guy, except Jeb Bush and the Republican Party. If they think they're going back to the Jeb Bush, George W. Bush Republican Party and they will ever win again, they are wrong. Trump was right about immigration that people want. You know, I was I was reflecting on this watching TV over the weekend. I saw somebody talk about undocumented immigrants and I thought, you know, that's an immoral thing to say, undocumented immigrants. Surely the rule of law matters. It's not immoral to say, I hate this law and I want to open the borders. It's wrong, but it's not immoral to say, I want a law opening the borders. But to say that somebody can break our law and yet it's insulting to to mention that he's an illegal immigrant because they are illegal immigrants. That's what they are. They're not even immigrants. They're illegal gate busters. You know, they're just they're just uh, invaders, basically, you know, and it has nothing to do with where they're from or who they are. It's just they have broken our laws and our laws are what keep us free. Our laws are what keep us equal. Uh, Being a country of laws and not of men is what makes uh, a free country work. And this idea that you can break our laws and just somehow we just shrug it off uh, is absolutely uh, is absolutely wrong. It's immoral. You know, it really is. Uh, you know, meanwhile, Biden has put out this statement with uh, Bernie Sanders called the Biden Sa- Sanders Unity Task Force, which is really far left stuff. You know, climate change is a global emergency. And it's not just a global emergency, but like so many crises facing the United States, the impacts of climate change are not evenly distributed in our society, of our economy. Communities of color, low income families and indigenous communities have long suffered disproportionate and cumulative harm from air pollution. 
because they breathe more, because the air condenses around. But you know, what are they talking about? You know, it's like, like, that was like that old joke about the New York Times headline, world ends women and uh, minorities hardest hit. You know, if, they, if climate change is this absolute global disaster, it's a global disaster for everybody. You know, the, their, economic, uh, their economic rules are very far left stuff we all know. And it's, it's just, it's galling because we've seen it all before. We have seen the dealing with the causes of crime. Oh, poverty causes crime. Poverty doesn't cause crime. You know, the, you know how you know that poverty doesn't cause crime? Because people on Wall Street, rich guys on Wall Street commit crimes. They don't commit the same crimes because they can do things safely with a pen that another man, a poorer man, has to do with a gun on the street. And I understand that. I understand that the kinds of crimes that come out of impoverished uh uh, neighborhoods are worse, but crime is caused by the human heart. That's the, that's what people will commit crimes. And we figured this out. We figured it out after decades of, you know, the kind of thing that Joe Biden is talking about, the rehabilitation stuff. We figured out the kind of no nonsense law enforcement that lowers crime, saves black lives. We put it in place and they want to go back. Progressivism is the most regressive philosophy there is. All right. Uh, American Home Shield. You get a home and you're happy you have a home and you say, I have a home. And then you think, wait a minute. How do I call the landlord to fix stuff? You can't do that because you own the home. That's why you want American Home Shield. It is America's most preferred home warranty. More than 1.8 million members of Home Shield. If American Home Shield can't repair something they cover, they'll replace it. As the nation's largest provider, they've paid more in home warranty claims than any other company that's added up to more than $2 billion in the past five years. American Home Shield members get more. They get more coverage options and fewer exclusions. Uh, They get local help no matter where you live with a nationwide network of 17,000 licensed professional contractors. You can find the right pro in your area to fix your problem. Plus, we've got a 50 buck off offer for listeners of the show. Go to a hs.com slash Clavin today to save 50 bucks and start protecting your home and budget from inevitable breakdowns. ahs.com slash Clavin. That's ahs.com slash Clavin for 50 bucks off any plan. American Home Shield. You can be sure with the shield. Limitations and exclusions apply. See plan for details. I know what you're thinking. How do you spell ahs? Nah, that's not what you're thinking. thinking how? Oh, how? Oh, how, how, how do you spell Clavin? It's KLA. <laughs> it is. It's so true. Uh, all access. Get your all access subscription. Boy, you should have heard us screaming at each other at the backstage thing on Friday. If you missed that, that was a real, that was a real brawl. We had a real argument uh, backstage, a friendly argument, but a real argument. Uh, and, uh, you know, we had Matt Walsh watching the DNC and now Matt has a little twitch. So that's kind of fun. Uh, we're going to have another one Thursday, August 27th. We'll be live streaming an all access live watch party for the last night of the RNC. That'll be hosted by Michael Knowles because it's his turn in the barrel. The live stream will start at 8.45 p.m. Eastern, 5.45 p.m. Pacific. Sign up at dailywire.com slash Clavin with coupon code ACCESS to get 20% off your all-access membership. Here was my favorite part of the Biden interview over the weekend. This is uh, cut four. Watch me, Mr. President. Watch me. (laughs) <laughs> Look at us both, what we say, what we do, what we control, what we know, what kind of shape we're in. Come on. This is, look, I think it's a legitimate question to ask anybody over 70 years old whether or not they're fit and whether they're ready. But uh, I just, only thing I can say to the American people, it's a legitimate question to ask anybody, watch me. Play the radio. Make sure the television, the, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. We choose science over fiction. We choose truth over facts. Think about it. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go, you know the you know the thing. <laughs> just watch me, he says. Just watch me. So, you know. Biden did exactly what Trump, Trump, what exactly what Trump said would happen, happened with Joe Biden. He got through his speech uh, without falling over, uh, without, you know, like saying anything incredibly stupid. And, oh, my goodness. What a wonderful, wonderful thing it was. How what a, the greatest thing ever. And, and Brian Stelter, by the way, Brian Stelter has come up with the idea of how to cover the RNC to protect any comparison with what we saw from Joe Biden. Here's uh, Brian Stelter. 
The convention begins on Monday. And the television networks are going to have interesting choices to make, interesting decisions to make about whether to cut away if there's this stream of disinformation happening live. <laughs> now, I can tell you, uh, Daniel Dale, CNN's <laughs> fact checker, he will be standing by. I think you will see him in prime time here on CNN, <laughs> providing fact checks when necessary. But I also think we're going to see uh, asymmetry in the way Fox covers the convention. He, 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 he cried. <laughs> He, he, he's hard. It's, it's been hard on Brian, you know. Brian Stelter is the most dishonest woman in the news business. I mean, maybe Chuck Todd. It's not just that he is so biased and that he's so obsessed uh, with, uh, I'm sorry, I'm using, I got to get my pronouns right. She is so biased and so obsessed uh, with Fox News and their biases. It's that she refuses to acknowledge that it's bias. They're going to cover, they covered, according to our friends at Media Research Center, you know, the Newsbusters website that I like so much, uh, they covered 90% of the RNC convention. Are they going to cover, of the DNC convention, are they going to cover 90% of the RNC? <laughs> Not if Brian Stelter has uh, anything to say about it. I didn't get a chance to cover Biden's speech, but I do want to talk about it a little bit. This is Biden's acceptance speech at the uh, DNC. And the reason I want to talk about it is because, like I said, the fact that he delivered this speech at all, that he didn't fall over and like bump his head on the you know, uh, teleprompter or something, was greeted with kind of wonder and delight. And Chris Wallace, who has become increasingly unreliable as an observer, and I, I, you know, I don't feel like Chris Wallace has to tow the Fox News party line, the conservative line. I don't feel that way at all. He has the absolute right to his opinions. But you want his opinions to be informed and incisive, right? I mean, you want some fact checking. You want some uh, some examples of his knowledge of history from being a reporter for such a long time. When he interviewed Donald Trump, I thought his questions were uh, ill formed. I thought they were badly phrased. I thought they were unfair. Uh, and everybody, you know, if Trump makes a gaffe, everybody jumps on that. Fair enough. But where's Joe Biden? And here is is Chris Wallace's reaction on Fox to. Biden's speech, 18. I thought that he blew a hole, a big hole in that characterization. Uh, you talked about the line uh, that uh, character is on the ballot, decency is on the ballot. He talked about a different path for the country, not in a, a deep programmatic sense, but he did talk about plans for the virus and the economy, uh, for climate change and race and foreign policy. And he talked about what a united America can do to accomplish all of those things. It seems to me that after tonight, Donald Trump is going to have to run against a candidate, not a caricature. This is a guy, Chris Wallace, who himself says he has never seen anything like Joe Biden's refusal to be interviewed by anybody. The interview with ABC was a softball interview. And, you know, it, there's none of this shouting at him, like people gathering around and shouting at him like they do with Trump. There's nobody, you know, th they ask Trump about QAnon and then they build this into a big thing. I don't, I don't understand why QAnon is such a problem. There's a bunch of kooks, you know, who support Trump. What's he, what's he supposed to say? You know, it's like they, so they have a kooky conspiracy theory. The kooky conspiracy theory from the Democrats is being sold by Nancy Pelosi. That's a lot more dangerous. Nobody's going to ask about that. Nobody's going to ask about the lies that Biden has told over the years, the, the uh, plagiarism, nothing like that. So he's praising the speech. Chris Wallace is pra praising the speech. And again, he has a right to his opinion, but, but it should be an informed, incisive opinion. That's all I ask. And let's take a look, for instance, he's, you know, uh, Wallace says, oh, Biden has a plan to deal with the Chinese flu. Let's hear Biden on the flu. This is cut seven. If I'm your president on day one, we'll implement the national strategy I've been laying out since March. We'll develop and deploy rapid tests with results available immediately. We'll make the medical supplies and protective equipment that our country needs. And we'll make them here in America so we will never again be at the mercy of China or other foreign countries in order to protect our own people. We'll make sure our schools have the resources they need to be open, safe, and effective. We'll put politics aside. We'll take the muzzle off our experts so the public gets the information they need and deserve. Honest, unvarnished truth. They can handle it. 
will have a national mandate to wear a mask, not as a burden, but as a patriotic duty to protect one another. <laughs> now, with the exception of that, that overreach about the masks, that he's going to have a national mandate to have a mask, which I may not even be constitutional. But aside from that, every single word he said, Trump has already done. And when he says, this has been my plan, let's not forget that he was against banning travelers from China because he thought it was, you know, xenophobic. Uh, you know, he, he has been completely behind the curve on this. But every single thing he said, with the exception of the mask mandate, Trump has already done. It's, it's really as if he said, you know, I'm going to have flyaway red hair and build buildings with my name on top of that. That's nobody's ever done that. You know, what is, it, what is he even talking about? What is he talking about? And all the stuff that they put out, you know, the yesterday Trump had a press conference to announce that he had uh, gotten FDA emergency approval for this plasma treatment, which has been helpful to about 35 percent of the people who have taken it. So it's reduced deaths by a third. Uh, and The New York Times immediately said it's, it's they use the plasma of people who've gotten sick. So they have antibodies. So the New York Times first attacks it as cynical because it comes out right before the Republican convention, then sends out a tweet. This is this really the New York Times actually does breaking news. Hong Kong says they found somebody who had the disease and then got it again. So maybe these antibodies don't like, you know, I mean, it's just they can't they can't stand it. It's the FDA. The FDA is largely responsible for the screw up on testing. They didn't uh, make emergency, uh, get rid of the regulations on an emergency basis. So people were spending like a hundred hours uh, on paperwork before they could get any tests done. And finally, they cleared that red tape away. Who do you think is better at clearing red tape away? Trump or the Democrats, the Democrats who come like they're basically made of red tape. They're like red tape. It's like a, a horror movie. They're like red tape monsters. So when Chris Wallace says, oh, how wonderful the guy actually stood on his feet and spoke words as if they were he knew what he, where he was, you know, it was just great. You know, he's talking about stuff that's like that all Trump has already done. And by the way, the hilarious power tie site uh, put out this little video sped up of Biden's 2008 Democrat convention speech versus his 2020 speech. Here they are. It's respect. It's about whether or not you can look your child in the eye and say, we're going to be all right. It's about respect. It's about your place in the community. It's about being able to look your kid in the eye and say, honey, it's going to be okay. Barack Obama will transform the economy by making alternative energy a national priority. An opportunity for America to lead the world in clean energy and create millions of new good-paying jobs in the process. And in the process, creating five million new jobs with five million new manufacturing and technology jobs. (laughs) You know, they say say as you get older, you can remember things in the far past better than you can remember yesterday. So maybe that's why Biden used the same speech. It's the same speech. (laughs) And it's like, we have to deal, we have to deal not just with the conflict between these two people, which are, is a, a conflict between two ways of running the country. I mean, Trump is an abrasive character. I know he is. But basically, we have these two parties. They're still the same two parties. Parties evolve over time. But this is still one party that thinks America is inherently great and one party that thinks America is inherently flawed. This is still one party that thinks individuals should be free to make their own decisions, to build their own businesses, to keep their own money, to spend their money the way they want. And another party that thinks, no, it's about the experts. It's about the governors. You should just do as you're told. Put on your damn mask. Put on your damn mask. Stay home. Shut down your business. We know what's best. Listen to the experts. Don't be against science. You know, yeah, we're wrong. Science has been wrong a million times during this pandemic. Experts have been wrong a million times, but listen to the next time because they're better than you. It's one, it's, it is basically one party that is in tune with the founding principle of personal liberty that was what made people come here in the first place. It's why people sailed across the ocean. And the other who is just feels that even sailing across the ocean was a crime against humanity because the Indians were here already and they shouldn't have been displaced. I mean, that's really that's really what's going on. And when you compare Donald Trump 
personally to Joe Biden. I know that Trump is the more uh, abrasive character, but Biden has a history of dishonesty. He has plagiarized before. He has lied before about his involvement in the civil rights movement. He has lied about his uh, school record in law school. He has lied about the plagiarism. He's lied about all this stuff. He was always an empty guy, and he's lying now repeatedly about Donald Trump saying there are good people on both sides, meaning the white supremacists and the Marxists, because that's not what he said. He never said it. The press just lets him get away with it. And that's the other thing we're dealing with. We're dealing with, with a party who is constantly attacked by the press and a party for whom the press covers. And personally, on that basis alone, I would rather have a president that the press is going to go after than have a president like Biden or Kamala Harris who are going to go after this country that they do not like. They essentially do not like the founding principles of this country, and they're going to go at it in the dark because the press won't cover it. I got to stop there, but I'll be back again tomorrow. I'm Andrew Clavin. This is The Andrew Clavin Show. The Andrew Clavin Show is produced by Robert Sterling. Executive producer, Jeremy Boring. Technical producer, Austin Stevens. Our supervising producer is Mathis Glover. Assistant director is Pavel Wadowski. Edited by Adam Saievitz. Audio mixed by Robin Fenderson. Hair and makeup, or head and makeup, by Nika Geneva. Animations are by Cynthia Angulo. Production assistants, McKenna Waters and Ryan Love. The Andrew Clavin Show is a Daily Wire production. Copyright Daily Wire. 2020. If you prefer facts over feelings, aren't offended by the brutal truth, and you can still laugh at the insanity filling our national news cycle, well, tune in to The Ben Shapiro Show. We'll get a whole lot of that and much more. See you there.